Hi, I'm Dan Coogan, owner of Safety Restraint Chair. We manufacture and sell these restraint chairs to prisons and jails, hospitals, and all kinds of medical and psychiatric facilities. This training video is intended to help train you and your personnel in the process to follow in properly restraining somebody in the restraint chair. And using this process will greatly reduce the chances of handlers and detainees from being hurt. The chair also facilitates evaluating someone's medical condition, if that need be. The chair is built to handle people weighing from 80 to 400 pounds, depending upon their build. We restrain people in the chair at seven different points on their body, both shoulders, both arms, both ankles, and the waist. The chair itself weighs 85 pounds. It's 28 and a half inches wide, so it fits through a standard commercial door. It has two wheels with brakes, and is, and is designed with a low center of gravity, so once somebody is in the chair, there's a very little chance that somebody's gonna tip the chair over. We recommend that at all times, there's at least two people handling a detainee in the restraint process. When you begin the restraint process, make sure that you have the chair located with enough space around for everybody to be able to work and have enough space so nobody gets hurt. It's also important that once you begin the restraint process, that all the personal items of the detainee are removed, like watches and jewelry and things like that. So we don't get anybody hurt, either the detainee himself or the handlers at that point. Once you've placed the chair in the proper space, you need to set the brakes. And to set the brakes, go to the back of the chair and you'll see two red levers. Take the red lever and move it towards the tire and the top of the piston head is custom made to fit directly inside the slots in the hub of the tire. So it may be necessary sometimes to move or rotate that tire somewhat to push that piston head directly into the slots. And, and then once you get that there, push the lever the rest of the way towards the tire and then that brake is secured. Repeat the process for the other side. Move the red handle towards the tire, making sure that the piston head fits inside the hub, and then push the lever the rest of the way towards the tire until it's locked out. Now both brakes are secure at that point, and the chair cannot be moved. Sometimes if you didn't have brakes, people would like to move the chair or kick the chair out of the way to make it more difficult to secure the person into the chair. So those brakes will help immensely by keeping the chair in one place and allowing you to put the person in the chair a lot easier than in the past. Now my assistant Joe will be the detainee today. So Joe, come on in. And Joe is wearing leg irons and handcuffs, which is typically used in prisons and jails. Now before you put the detainee in the chair, you'll notice that there's a cutout in the seat or the, in the chair back. That's to allow the handcuffed person to place his hands with handcuffs in that spot so they can still sit down comfortably in the chair. All right, Joe, go ahead and sit down. Now, Joe has his hand in handcuffs through the back of the chair, which allows him to sit back in the chair comfortably. Now, the first thing we want to do is once the person is in the chair, is put on the lap strap. So come over to the right side of the chair and pull the lap strap completely out of its holder take it inside the chair and across his lap. Then go to the other side and you'll notice at the end of the strap there's a loop sewed into the strap and that loop allows you to place this over that bar and locate the strap in that position. So now go back to the other side. Oop, I've got that twisted put the loop up and over, and now that strap is in place. Go back to the other side of the chair and then pull on the end of the strap until the strap is tight and he's secured into the chair. You can place the excess part of the strap up and over the frame because he may need to be transported and that keeps that strap out of the way. Now the next thing we want to do is restrain the ankles. Now Joe in this case is wearing leg irons. The first step is to place the leg irons behind this 
chain retainer. So that'll hold the chain in place, and then that'll keep the detainee from kicking wildly in the chair. Once the chain is behind the chain retainer, you'll want to pull out the ankle strap to its fullest extension, push the ankle back against the frame, and hold that in place. Take the strap around and back, and place the strap up in the clevis that's behind the ankle, and then pull on that strap until the strap is tight. Again, do not over tighten the strap, but make sure it's very tight. You repeat that process with the other strap. Take it all the way out, around the ankle, push the ankle back against the frame of the chair, and inside, the strap goes inside that clevis. Pull on the strap until it's tight, and now both ankles are secure. The next step in the restraint process is to place the handcuff tether, which we have at the back of the chair. And this helps keep the detainee's hands and handcuffs in place. There's a spring hook on the back or at the end of this strap. And you place that spring hook in the chain of the handcuffs that are on the detainee. Once that is in place, you can begin restraining both arms. Now we will release one arm at a time. So we will undo the handcuffs, take one arm out, place it through the arm strap. Now this is the biggest and most important part of restraining the arms. You want to make sure that the hand, the wrist, and the forearm are all flat against the armrest. It may take somebody else or a second person to make that happen, depending on how cooperative the detainee is. So you want to make sure the hand, the wrist, and the forearm are flat against that, and then pull the arm strap until it's very tight. And we don't want to over tighten it because we don't want to injure or cause pain to the detainee. But we do want to make sure that is very tight. Many times, Detainees will try to turn their hand or their arm, their wrist, so they can create a space between the armrest and the strap itself. That's why we need to make sure that the arm and the hand and the wrist are all flat to take out excess slack in the strap. So make sure that's very tight and then proceed to this other arm. We will release the handcuff from the other side. Take off the handcuff tether, bring the arm around, place it through the arm strap, and again, making sure everything is flat against the armrest, pull that strap tight so it's very tight, but not too tight. Now we have the ankles restrained, the waist, and the arms. Now because the arms used to be behind his back and are now out on the armrest, there may be some slack in the lap strap. So we should retighten that and make sure that that lap strap is secure. Now the final step in the restraining process are the shoulder straps. Now you'll notice that the shoulder straps have a V built into them. So we want to make sure that this V is placed at the back of the neck like this, and we drape the shoulder straps around their shoulders. You then take the first strap underneath their armpit and then back over their frame until you see the clevis there. Now there are knots sewed into the strap, and you want to put one of those strap or one of those knots underneath that clevis and then slide that strap right in there so it's fairly tight. Repeat that on the other side. Pull the arm strap back underneath the arm, over the frame, making sure we have a knot underneath the clevis, slide the strap in, and now that's fairly secure. We finish tightening the shoulder strap by pulling this back, getting both straps in place correctly 
around the head, and then pull tightly on that shoulder strap. And that'll make sure that both shoulders are pushed back against the chair back. You'll notice that the straps have another benefit. They provide a cushion for the head. Sometimes people would like to hurt themselves once they got in the chair by banging their head against the chair back, or even if there was a wall nearby and the chair was close to a wall, they would try to bang their head and hurt themselves. This provides a, a small cushion for their head so they cannot hurt themselves. So that's the process in properly restraining somebody into the chair. Once somebody has been in the chair for two hours, we recommend that they be taken out of the chair and allowed to walk around and uh, get their circulation going again because we don't want to restrict any circulation or breathing in any way once the detainee has been in the chair for two hours. So they need to take a break after two hours and then place back in the chair if need be. If you have any questions, you can go online to our website, restraintchair.com, and fill out a contact form and send us your questions on how to use and restrain people in this chair. You can also get our phone number there and call us directly. So we look forward to working with you, and thanks for your time today.